This is not the Star Trek episode, even though that's the Star Trek sound. This is a very special bonus episode of the Penultimate Podcast. I'm Rocco Jerome. I'm Jeremy Hicks. And uh, what we're going to do here, Jeremy and I have had a, uh, a history of, of doing stuff with people. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't have put it better myself. Yeah. This might be the first time you're listening to us because you're attracted to the name Bruce Campbell, who I was lucky enough to do an interview with. Yeah, tell us uh, tell us a little bit about uh, how this came uh, came together. Okay, well, so when I was a kid, Bruce Campbell was a super big hero for me, like 12, 13 years old. And that was because I somehow managed to see uh, the Evil Dead movies right around the time that Army of Darkness was coming out. And to me, Bruce Campbell was like, this means that you can you can do stuff. You don't, you're you, like most people are like, okay, you're either going to live in this town and work at a job like everybody else does, because you're never going to be lucky enough to be Harrison Ford. And there's no point in between. Right. So the fact that uh, Bruce Campbell and Sam Raimi and those guys were able to make movies and get away with it. To me, it spoke to me and said, you are, perhaps able to, to find some place and you don't need to make a zillion dollars and be on the cover of magazines, but you might just be able to find a niche. And that was what that meant to me. So it was always a big deal for me. And I was a big fan of Briscoe County jr. And all that sort of stuff. So, um, I was able to uh, interview him for a magazine and, uh, it was a really big deal for me. And what you're going to hear here in this uh, uh, this thing is is sort of the uh, the recording that I did uh, to then write the article, and the article was a very edited version of of what I talked to him about. Yeah. And the funny thing about this is, is that I called him, and you know, like I don't get nervous often about anything, but like I was really like kind of starstruck, <laughs> you know. Even though it's something that's more a part of my past than anything, I don't I don't really know what Bruce Campbell is up to that much any day uh, these days anymore. Uh, but uh, you know, I called him. I was like, "Hucko," and he was like, "Hey, hey, listen, I can't talk right now. You got to call me back. Call <laughs> me back in like four minutes." They're like, "I think he said nine minutes. Call me back in nine minutes." <laughs> and I was like, "Okay." And I just sat there and watched my my phone. Longest nine minutes of your life. Waited for the nine minutes to go by looking around for things that could screw it up for me and prevent me. So what you hear in this is me calling him and saying, Hey, is it okay to talk now? That's how it begins. That's pretty much how it begins. All right. And we, we talk about, uh, we talk about things that I have never known him to be asked about in any sort of a public forum. So I think it's a little bit of a, an interesting, interesting bit. Cool. Looking forward to checking that out. All right, here it goes. Good morning. Hey, Bruce. Did I give you enough time there? Yes, you did. Thank you. And I'll tell Jerry and Wizards in the future to sort of spread these out. I think he had it stacked up a little too tight. There's planes landing at LAX. Yeah, man. That's a, that's a hard thing. Here we are. Here we are. So, uh, uh, we're good to go. We're good to go. I'm the guy who I think you saw this picture of me and you 20 years ago. Oh yeah, I'm just gonna tell you Yeah, I'm you I'm that door. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I was uh when I met you then I was I was uh super starstruck. I uh, didn't know what to do with myself and uh uh I, I'm sure I was extremely forgettable. Uh hopefully uh, well, that's, around that's gonna happen. Yeah, that's right. Well uh I'm I'm a big fan of yours from way back and I have to say that, that being a big fan of yours when I was thirteen, fourteen years old it really told me that there was something I could do between work at a factory like my dad or be Harrison Ford. Like, there's a path of less resistance. There's a DIY mm -hmm. path. And uh, mm -hmm. this is a, a big deal for me, and I think, I think all you guys are great. And it's just really cool for me to get to talk to you. Sure, well, I'm glad you are doing something close to what you want to do in life. Most people don't have, uh, they don't really uh, spend that much time. Most people yeah, don't have right. Well, yeah, life is not I mean, a rehearsal, as Sam Rennie's mother used to tell me. Yeah. <laughs> I talked to uh, Ted Rennie last night. Uh, oh, good. I got a, real, got a real kick out of him. I, I kept him on the phone for an hour. I think he enjoyed it. Uh, we, we seem to be having a good time. Well, I won't give you an hour, but I'll give you a few minutes. 
Okay, excellent. So do you guys still all hang out together? Is it, is it still the... I hang out with Dad all the time. Yes, Ted's at the hotel. Sam is busy, he's got, you know, 47 kids, and so, uh, you know, he has a very rich life outside of movies, so he's a pretty busy guy. But the nice thing is, you know, it was great to work with him again. Yeah, on the new show, right? Yep, exactly right. Now, uh, uh, I'd imagine that that's obviously a labor of love. How, how exciting is it for you to get back into the, uh, the chainsaw hand, as it were? Uh, well, now it's mostly just labor. Because as a middle-aged yeah. man, you know, <laughs> these, these things don't come so easily. Uh, right. It's good. It's fun to play Ash again. I feel like I can go back and uh, give Ash the tweets that I want to give him now. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Well, uh, it's interesting to have Ash be uh, an older guy now, obviously. Uh, yeah. Is he in a sort of a different place in life at this point? Does he maybe manage the F mark? No. Nope. No. no. Ash is, Ash is right where you think he he would be. He's in a trailer park, you know, picking up chicks late at night, lying about how he lost his right hand. That's yes, right. right. That's our buddy. And because of his foolish uh, his foolishness, he's unleashed these long dormant demons, and now at a point in his life where he really doesn't want to have to deal with this, he has to. Right. He has to get back on the horse, as it were. Yeah. Uh, so when you were on tour and you you would come through and and when I met you you were you were Briscoe County Junior, and I was very much like I, I know who you are you're Bruce Campbell, <laughs> you know, like that that's cool kid you know let's, let's, let's take a picture real quick. Uh, what do you remember about those tours when you were, were going around and being Briscoe? Um, well I had a lot of energy back then you know uh, I yeah. we we would shoot all week. Until about three o'clock in the morning, sometimes on a Friday night, we called them Saturday, because yeah. you know Briscoe was a very, a very challenging shoot, lots of moving parts, and uh, yeah. we put in some serious hours on that show. Then I'd get picked up by a car about you know six thirty in the morning, after a few hours of sleep, and they'd shove you in a car and off to some city, and you know with your gun and your luggage and your holster, hoping they weren't gonna you know, ask any weird questions. And um, yeah, we we'll were parade around in, in some city, come back Sunday night, Monday morning, you're back at it at 7 a.m. and looking at your coast guard going, what's your name? Yeah. You know, right. it, it was a very, very busy time. I didn't mind touring. I still don't mind touring. I don't mind uh, promoting stuff because how the hell are people going to know what you're up to if you don't promote right. it? Yeah. Anytime I hear about these stories of actors who won't, do publicity, I'm like, you're an idiot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, who, who, who taught you Who taught you that? My dad was in yeah. a Detroit madman for 30 years. He was a madman in the, in, uh, the Motor City. And, yeah. you know, he he's like, he often told me, you can do the best work in your life, but if nobody sees it, what the hell are you doing it for? Right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I remember that day that you were, and you were at the mall, you were at a local mall, and there were a, a I did a lot of malls, yeah. Right, yeah. There were there were so many people there. It was amazing. And there were kids dressed in cowboy costumes, like you would think you'd see yeah. 50. Uh, yeah, it was bizarre. Well, this show was a slightly old school show. Yeah, right, right. Well, it was, it was a great show. I loved it. Um, I remember that when, uh, uh, when you did that, when you were there for that, I was very much thinking, like, Wow, like, you know, this is really something that can last. Like, this, this can have legs. <laughs> can have, yeah, one, it's a one season wonder. Yeah. Well, you got to finish the season at least, right? There was no big season. Oh, well, it's a hell of a season. It's 20, 26 episodes. Right. And a lot happened in that, that second half of the season. That's when you saw the, uh, sure did. the stuff where it turned out the guy was in the hand and all of them. I, I felt like it came out pretty well. Would you say that? Yeah. Yeah, it did. Uh, uh, unfortunately, you know, the last episode was a two-parter, and right. at the end of it, it ends, at the end of the first part of the last episode, Ash and yeah. his guys are shot at dawn, Breaker Morant style, and then some markets did not show that final, because they yanked it, they didn't show that oh, final wow. episode where we wake up, it was rubber bullets, we ride out yeah. over the sunset. And some people were like, wow, that was a, well, yeah. a lousy way to end that series. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> 
Yeah, you had shovels underneath your shirt. I remember that when that happened, I was really concerned about you and Bowler. I didn't know it was going to happen. You should have been. You should have been. <laughs> <laughs> any, uh, any chance you might revisit uh, Briscoe at some point? Hey, man, they're, they're redoing everything, so never say never. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it could be Briscoe the third, and you could be the dad. Yeah, well, maybe you can finance it, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. Uh, well, um, uh, gosh, you know, I'm smiling. I'm smiling ear to ear. Uh, this is very unprofessional of me, I guess. I just, uh, I'm, I'm glad that you're around. Uh, I'm glad that you've been hard at work and you've been doing so many neat things over the years. I haven't gone anywhere. Yeah, yeah, you're you're doing your thing. Um, I would say, like when you and your, your the guys were were first starting out, did you have any idea that it would lead to all this? Well, no. The idea is just to get in the business. That was the only. It was the only goal. It didn't matter how we did it. I said yes to every early part, maniac cop, whatever. You know, it didn't didn't matter. Uh, it's time to plow the field, and then wherever that led it was wherever that led, and that's like that to this day. Things just lead in a Mr. Toad's wild ride. You just go where it goes. Technology yeah. changes, movies change, TV changes. Uh, video games change, you just kind of go. I just did my first Call of Duty, you know. Oh, wow. That's great. That's really good. How did you like voice acting? Uh, I've actually done a lot of it. I did all the Evil Dead games. and I did the original yeah. Pit Paul Harry for Activision. And, right. Um, yeah, I've done it for a while. It's fun. It's very, yeah. very antiseptic work. Yeah, 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 for sure. Sure, pretty, pretty easy to do. Uh, compared to all the physicality type stuff that you're doing now and uh yeah. in previous interviews, I, I would imagine. Um, I uh um I'm I'm just thrilled to get to talk to you. I'll make sure to speak out and give you a copy of the uh and uh and hopefully I'll get you to sign it and maybe we can we can recreate that photograph. <laughs> uh yeah, sure, why not? Yeah, good stuff. Uh, right, well, come on down. Come on down see it. I look forward to seeing folks in Tulsa. It's always been a very friendly place. Uh, I've been in about 10 years. We'll see what it's, how it's doing. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. Last time you were here was the, uh, you came to a bookstore. Yeah, that, when that was when uh, your book was out, your first book was out. Yeah, I came for the second book, I think, too, uh, in 2005. Yeah. First one was probably 2000, and about five years later, it was the second one. Yeah, yeah, pretty cool. Good stuff. Uh, well, All right, my friend, nice talking to you. You too. See you down the road. All right, sir. Bye-bye.